How are we doing, guys? And yes, it's one of those videos. Arsenal have signed a player. Welcome to Arsenal, Leandro Trossard. So, like I said, Arsenal have finally signed a player. And it's Leandro Trossard from Brighton. And... Um, it came out of the blue, to be quite honest with you. I know his name had been mentioned and everything else um, after the whole Mudrick, you know, saga and whatnot. Um, but it looked like that that was kind of at the back of the queue, that there was maybe a few names that were a little bit more advanced. But you never know. Maybe Arsenal went about their business a little bit more quietly so that um, the Chelsea owner didn't step in and just try and buy him randomly. Um, but listen, we've got a Premier League proven player. We've got strength in depth. We've got experience. And I think that we've got a very good player. Now, he's only got a few months left on his contract at Brighton. Um, there has been a fallout with the new manager at Brighton, which is one of the reasons why I feel that we've been able to get this deal done. But when you're looking at the figures that are being mentioned at the moment, we're talking around about £20 million. Now, in this, you know, current market we're in, £20 million right now is actually not bad for a Premier League proven player. And that, for me, is an absolute bargain. When you're looking at some of the prices that are going on and you're looking at some of the prices that are being mentioned for players... I actually think that's not too bad. And one of the reasons why we're getting quoted such high prices for players is because of the business that's being done by other clubs. You're looking at wingers at the moment. You go back to the whole Mudrick deal and everything else. We were being quoted, the prices we were being quoted because of the signing from Manchester United of Anthony. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, what? So because Manchester United spent about £100 million on a fidget spinner, everybody else now has to pay £100 million for a player in the same position. And I'm sitting there and thinking to myself, really? Is that what's happening? Is this what's going on in the current market? There's nothing we can do about it. But because of other people's reckless signings, everybody else has to suffer. And you look at this now. And because of Chelsea going in for Mudrick and doing what they did, when you go to clubs for players in these positions again, they're now sitting there and saying, well, £100 million pound for Mudrick? Well, our player's worth that as well. Because when you look statistically at Mudrick, although he's got the potential and everything else, his overall statistics currently is not that impressive. He's not played a lot of football. He's not scored a lot of goals in the Ukrainian league. So teams are looking and going, well, hold on a minute, £100 million and he's not really done all that, has he? Well, he's worth £100 million as well because you put this into perspective, here's a simple scenario. If the likes of Anthony and the likes of Mudrik are worth £100 million, then how much is Bukayo Saka worth right now? Double that. Over 200 million, if you're going to go by their logic, I'm not saying we're going to get 200 million for Saka, etc., etc. I'm just using it as a comparison. If you're going, right, well, he's worth that much, then Saka's worth way more, way, way more. So for me, Trossard is a no-brainer when you look at it. Um, 28 years old, literally just turned 28 in December. And I know that over years gone by, you'll sit there and say 28 is the prime years. And yes, that's a really good age. But I feel that footballers' careers now don't really end at 31, 32 years old. You remember Arsenal used to have a policy of never signing players over 30 years old. I think that with, you know, the, the, the modern game and the way that players look after themselves and the medical advances, um, a lot of players now, they're continuing right up to about 34, 35, even some further. Um, so when you're looking at a player that's 28 years old, you've got way, way more years left in him. Um, and what it brings to the team is strength in depth. What it brings to the team is Premier League proven. Um, you look at him statistically this season. Um, he's played 16 times for Brighton this season in the Premier League. He scored seven goals and he's created two assists. 
That's not bad statistics. He scored a hat-trick at Anfield as well. Remember that. Um, but there was one part of his play that actually caught my eye um, and why Arsenal might be looking to be involved. Now, obviously, one of the things that Arsenal demand or Mikel Arteta demands is the work rate and everything. And I've seen some people say he doesn't really work hard or whatnot. And I don't see that. And I do see him doing the defensive side of his game. Um, and he's created 13 block shots and 11 tackles. So he does get stuck in and he does get involved in the defensive areas. Um, contrary to belief, six interceptions as well. So maybe that is something that Mikel Arteta has looked at as well and said, you know what, he can do that side of his game and we will obviously help to adapt him even further. Um, but what this will do is take the pressure off the likes of Martinelli, off the likes of Bakayo Osaka. Um, he can play in a multitude of roles um, across the front line. So for me, I... Listen, like I said, I think it's a no-brainer. £20 million. I think that what this would allow Arsenal to do is maybe go and explore other options, bigger options in the summer. Right now, you know, if you're talking about top, top attacking players, you're thinking of players like Liao at AC Milan. All right? You ain't getting him in January. Absolutely no chance of you getting him in January. All right? So... If you're going to go after a player like that, of that calibre, and spend that kind of money, then it's going to have to be in the summer. I'm not saying that Arsenal are going to get that done in the summer. I'm giving you a kind of example so you've got an idea as to those kind of players, the top-level players. You ain't getting them in January. And if you're trying to take them away from their clubs in January, you're going to be talking ridiculous amounts of money. You're looking at Diaby as well. That's a player that we're being spoken about having a very good season in the Bundesliga. Um, but right now, they're looking at it and saying, well, yeah, you know, if you want to try and take him from us in January, then you're looking 80, 90 odd million pound. And I'm thinking, OK, he's a good player. He's had a great season so far. But right now, is he worth that? No, not for me. So I'm looking at it, value for money, Premier League proven, everything else. I think it is a no-brainer. 20 million pound is what's being quoted. That's a bargain. Spurs win for him. Apparently, they were just trying to, you know, throw 12 million at him. And Brighton laughed. And listen, at the end of the day, if Trossard's looking at it, is he going to go to Spurs that are fighting for top six? Or is he going to come to Arsenal and possibly win a Premier League winner's medal? Come on now, it's a no-brainer. Um, so listen, let me know in the comment section what you think. Do you like this signing? Are you happy with this signing? Let me know. Leandro Trossard, welcome to Arsenal. I'm happy with it. I hope you're happy with it. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.